Peace with you, sisters and brothers, and a warm welcome to the start of this new series by Father Terence Pereira and the Office for the New Evangelization. We have titled this series, Church Interrupted, Becoming the Church for Our Times. And the heart of this series is the desire to explore what it means to be church, what it means to be sought and light of this world, and to be bearers of the good news. In, in all seasons of time, and perhaps more so now at a time when the, ch the world is actually hurting, uh, in pain and in great need. So for each session, Father Terence Pereira, our Episcopal Vicar for the New Evangelization, he will lead us to explore uh, various themes about the church, our mission, our identity, our purpose. We'll also be joined by guests uh, from various walks of life who will come along this learning journey. So joining me today are Keith, Shireen, uh, Jero and Estelle, and we want to explore today the topic, it's about the missionary nature of the church. So welcome and thank you. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. In today's episode, we want to have a conversation to remember what are we about fundamentally as a church? What is the purpose of the church and why do we exist? So I thought we could begin today by starting with a question. Maybe you can, all of, all of you can share uh, your idea and your experience of what church is for you when you were growing up. What was your idea? What was your experience of church? Yeah, I was baptized as an infant um, and growing up, going to church with my family uh, was really for me just, I, I guess in my simple mind at that point in time, just going to spend time with some really nice people because that was what I associated with church. You know, just some very nice uncles and aunties and my friends from catechism class. Um, it was nothing really much more than that. I think until um, I attended a retreat, much, much later on in life, I think I was 24 or 25 years old when I attended a, 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 an encounter retreat. And for the first time, I understood what it was to have a personal relationship with the Lord. And I think things started to change then. Yeah, after discovering what it meant to have a personal and an active relationship with Jesus Christ. For me, I'd say my, my idea and experience of church was largely shaped by my image of God. Um, I think for up until maybe my 20s, I felt like I needed, to earn, um, I needed to earn God's love by being good. So going for mass, uh, even being an altar server and all that, you know, serving at weekday masses and all that. I, I remember I, whenever I would make the sign of the cross, I'd be like, God, eh, you're seeing me, eh? I'm here. Eh? You know, uh, and in so doing, hopefully, as if to score some brownie points, so that whatever prayers and intentions I had, which were largely about getting good grades and maybe trying to impress one or two girls, um, would be fulfilled. I grew up in a very devotional uh, Catholic setting. Um, we used to have night prayers every night, and we would sing all these songs. And so, I think um, going to church on Sundays felt kind of like. Um, being a part of like a bigger group of people who knew these songs that I was singing like every night. Yeah, and just, you know, seeing other people uh, singing them along with me and, 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 and getting that sense of like, oh, there's actually uh, more than just me and my family doing all these prayers. Um, and, I, and I used to really look forward to Sundays actually because of that. Yeah, and plus my parents always bring me to McDonald's after mass so that was kind of like as a kid you know like you really look forward to that because you associate like Sunday mass with like <laughs> McDonald's right yeah so I just remember growing up um, in that kind of environment and just kind of like um, sort of seeing the church as more like um, a, a place uh, that I would visit every Sunday so thanks for sharing all of our different experiences I guess it's quite wide ranging and it's you know it's really uh quite different from person to person. Um, but I was just wondering as we were growing up, uh, was, was, it, was there ever sort of this question of like, actually what does the church exist to do? Is it just about me coming for masses? Is it just about me uh, and my relationship with God? Uh, what, was, what was the purpose or what was the, the mission of the church? I wonder whether that was a question that was on our minds. I think for me in a very basic sort of sense it was, uh, but I saw it more as a case of this is where the good people and yeah, this, this is like a little clubhouse for all the good people to go and worship God on Sunday. And, and I guess I was just fortunate to be a part of it. I think for me, it was quite clear, right? Even when I wasn't a Catholic or a Christian, because I was always approached by 
only Protestants, never a Catholic, you know, to talk about the faith. Um, and it, it was very clear to me what these people were trying to do. But when I, when I got into the, the, the Catholic faith, I remember during my RCIA, we were told to go knock on doors or to go, to go to the streets and talk to people about God. And I was really terrible because we were, we, were go, we were going out in pairs. And I told my partner, I said, did you tell your family you're going to church? Say no. I said, neither did I. I said, you know what? If we can't tell our family, then you know, we shouldn't be telling people about, about it. And so both her and me, we just did not. We just walked around the mall and then we went back to the retreat center, you know? So we did nothing. But I mean, long story short, as we come back to now, right? Now that we're more formed. And I realized that that's something that the Catholic Church is really missing. You know, the, the, the nature of the church and what we're supposed to do. I think maybe sometimes we also don't have a very clear idea. Are we supposed to go and knock on doors? Are we supposed to be like a person holding a sign at the street corner going, you know, this is, this is a day of um, reckoning is coming, you know? So this is something I would like to really learn more about. Gisilda, well, what's your question? Oh, well, I don't understand. What are you talking about? You know, that would be my answer, you know, at that time. What? What are you talking about? Church lah, building lah. Go there lah, have fun lah. Come on. <laughs> Just be with everybody else. What do you mean? Nature, church, what the? Hey, come on. Don't ask this kind of question. It's not important. What is more important? Have fun. More important, meet friends. More important, don't miss mass. <laughs> oh, those are the important things. The question you ask lah. Oh, they would say, Tiabo. And believe me, uh, even when I entered the seminary, uh, the same thing was in my head. You know? <laughs> uh, who knows, man? That's why I wonder why God called me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Father, how would you now answer this question now that you've gone down the journey <laughs> many more <laughs> years later? <laughs> when I was in the seminary, I was, I was asked to join the RCI experience. I rebelled against, which I made it hard for everybody. You know. But they chose me to play Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then anyway, I had to memorize this line. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe all the commands that I gave you. Oh. You know, I memorized it, eh? And I didn't see the, the importance of it until much, much later. Even something like in the 10th year of my priesthood. Before that, it was always about, you know, let's form the church. Let's uh, give people the information they need. Let them experience the love of God. But this dimension, go out, make disciples of all nations. So now this, during the season, right? We cannot come together as church. You know, it reminds me of the early Christians. You know, when uh, Rome came and sacked uh, Jerusalem completely. They cannot come together. They could not come together. They had to be dispersed. And they could not come to the community as they used to. So here they are, dispersed. And what did they do? They went out and they evangelized. They carried out the, the, the command of Jesus. Go make disciples of all nations. So for us today, this is the call. So for me, yeah, this has been developing, uh, uh, this thought of what church is. And last year when, when I sent out some participants in a program, about 28 of them who went out and they went to speak Imagine now, they went to speak to more than 1,700 people in one day about Jesus Christ. And actually this year, if it hadn't been for the COVID, right? I actually set a target for the parish. We're going to speak to 10,000 Singaporeans about Jesus Christ. So if we look to the documents of uh, Vatican II, Ad Gentes, in paragraph 1, in paragraph 36, it says very clearly, we are Christians, Catholics, church, insofar as we go out and tell others about Jesus Christ. 
This is how we are church. Father, what would you say to, to a possible question of, uh, I am already serving in a ministry or I'm already quite busy with other things and uh, I, I don't have a charism to do mission. What would you say to someone who may think in this way when it comes to thinking about mission? Now we cannot come to church. We cannot do the things that we have always been doing. And so it gives us a chance to pause and ask of ourselves, you know, okay, as a lector, as a warden, what is your job description? Lector, okay, go and read. Or do the intercessory prayer. Or read out the intercessory prayer. Warden, job description. Uh, make sure the car park is done properly. Uh, collect money. Uh, usher people into the pews, you know? Well, if that is our job description, uh, what does it mean to be Catholic? See, being in a ministry is supposed to help us grow in a community. The ministry must be a community that helps us to pray, helps us to learn more about our faith, enables us to go out and share the Word of God. But this mm -hmm. has not been happening. All the stuff that we have been doing, many of it, uh, quite a big portion of it has been doing things in church. And if you look at it, the ministries that we have, how many of it are focused on developing skills, the tools that we need to fulfill the command of Jesus? Go make disciples of all nations. So it is very important for us to remember this, I, as a Catholic, have the obligation, because of the command of Jesus, to go and evangelize. This must be the first thing. So as I join the wardens, or the extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, as I join, my thinking must be, I'm going to join them to learn how to be a missionary. Learn how to go and tell others about Jesus Christ. Right now, we don't need to meet as, say, wardens. We don't need to meet as choir, you know, because it's no work. Well. But actually, right now, the call to meet is even more urgent. We must come together via Zoom, via this, via whatever whatever format, whatever channel you want, to know the scriptures, to know the doctrines of the church, to understand it, and then share it with others. So you see, right now, we're not preoccupied with, okay, who's going to be on duty? Who's going to do the rostering? And all this stuff. We can now be not preoccupied, but occupied with what the Lord has said to us. Go make disciples of all nations. So it is not the task of one group that we form as a ministry, as an organization, right? To go do with missionary work. And it is a bit wrong to think that, you know, missionary work is about going abroad. Missionary work is here, where we are, and also abroad. Many of us, or there are quite a number of people who think that missionary work is about going out of the country. No. And it is not the work of one organization to do it. The Lord is asking you to go and make disciples of all nations. So this missionary work is the responsibility, the obligation of every single person. I think, it, Father, as you're sharing that, uh, I was reminded of this quote from Pope Francis a few years ago of how the church should not exist as a club for saints, you know, mm. where we just hang out amongst ourselves, but rather uh, he sees it as a field hospital for sinners, you know. So because mm. people have gone out to try and love, to try and witness, but maybe in the process they've gotten hurt, but they've tried, you know, they've gone out, they've gone to serve, and they come back to be nourished, to be, uh, I suppose, made whole again. 
uh, in within the church. But there's a certain element of going out and bringing people uh, mm. who also well, maybe don't need, don't know they um, don't know that this is what they need. You know, life giving food, life giving water from our Lord. You know, I, I hope you don't get me wrong when I said, you know, the work as a choir or liturgy commission, committee and, and all that is not as important as missionary work. The work of the lectors, the choirs, the wardens and all the other ministries are important because when we bring people back to the community, the church, the assembly, right, we must bring them back to something that is vibrant. So imagine they come to a church where the choir can't sing properly. Or they bring a, a non-baptized person into the church and the wardens are very inhospitable, right? It, it's counter-witnessing. Yes, of course, we need to focus on, on the ministries that we have, the work that we are doing in church, but that cannot be primary. That is secondary. Because we want to welcome people back to a wonderful experience. So that's why we must remember uh, that work that we do must change. Focus must change. Priorities must change. I hear what you say, Father. I feel like one of the tensions that we've always had to walk in, in ministry and community is this too, ministry and community, that mm. as a community of disciples, God wants us to be able to care for one another spur one another to good works, challenge one another, grow one another. But at the same time, this community cannot be just inward about growing ourselves. It also has to be constantly, there always needs to be almost like an empty seat where we're always expecting to be bringing a new person to be part of this community. Mm -hmm. But the struggle is always very real that it takes time for relationships to form. And by the time they are formed, I'm very reluctant to open up the group and have to get used to new dynamics again. But yet that's the yeah. call of Jesus, that no one to be left out, everyone to hear the good news. And I guess that's kind of the challenge perhaps that we all uh, are asked to walk and this tension that we are asked to hold. Because if we all go out and we also don't tend to the flock, then uh, we would, like you say, we'll bring people into an environment and a culture that will not be healthy and conducive to their maturing as disciples as well. Actually, if, if you want to remember what we have said, I'd like to tell you this story. It's about uh, a coastline, which is quite rugged. And uh, somewhere at one end of that coastline, there was a small little house and they called it a lighthouse. People would go there and they would, especially when the weather is rough, and they would, you know, make sure that the ships that are passing by would not come too close to the shoreline. And sometimes when there's a shipwreck, these people who are at the lighthouse will then, you know, get into smaller boats, go out there and bring in those sailors that have been shipwrecked. As time went on, people kind of liked to go there and they began to be comfortable there. And that house that they had, they started, you know, fitting it with more comfortable furniture, started painting the place. As time passed on, it became something like a clubhouse. And then one day, there was a storm. And the people who were in the clubhouse went out into the stormy waters, brought people back into that so-called clubhouse. And these people were wet, they were dirty. And so the furniture in that room was getting soiled and the place was becoming very messy. So a few days later, they had a meeting. And so people stood up and said, you know, it is not right. You know, we spent so much money and we painted up the place. We put in wonderful furniture. And now what is happening? We're getting all these people coming in and they mess up the place and the place smells. So why don't we just build another house somewhere? There was another group of people who said, look, the original idea for this house was to help these people who are shipwrecked. This is what the lighthouse was meant for. And then they had a debate and finally they took a vote and they voted that this is going to be a clubhouse. So the people who were a minority who wanted it to be a place 
that would save others moved down to another part of the coast. The same thing. And happened with our churches. What was the original intention of the church? Was it built so that we can be comfortable with one another and have our own thing, our own activities for one another. It is time to remember. Why this community was called together. Time to remember. What is our duty? What is our purpose as church? Thank you, Father, for your sharing. Um, I think today we are really reminded that mission lies at the heart of what it means to be church. And in this time, especially where we are experiencing quite a bit of disruptions in our world around us, that all the more we are called as a church to rise up and to take our positions and to be bearers of this good news. Perhaps for some of us who um, may not yet be in a ministry, that one of the things we could then do would really be to ask the Lord to give us a name of someone in our life who has yet not known Christ or maybe have left the church for many years. Who is this one person in whom you can begin to invest uh, in a friendship with, in a relationship with. I remember this week, uh, that was what I did. Uh, I began to ask God for a name and uh, I felt this particular person came to my mind, not a non-believer. And uh, I'm still looking for opportunities to speak more with this person. But for this week, what I've decided to do is I'm just going to commit her to prayer every day. Every day, I'm just going to ask God, make a door, make, open a door for me, give it a crack of a window, anything that will let me get one foot in to just be with this person, to just listen to this person and befriend this person and be able to recognize a time where it will be right to then begin to speak about the deeper issues of life and about God as well. So perhaps that will be my challenge to all of us to just think of somebody uh, whom you can speak with or befriend with, uh, be a friend to and just see where the Lord leads you in the coming week. So thank you so much for joining us today uh, as we learned about what's the purpose of the church and how we as the church would need to begin to take our eyes off of ourselves and also to fix our eyes to see what is around us, what are some of the needs around us, the people who need our help to bring hope and to speak life to their situations. Uh, next episode, we want to talk about who exactly is the church. So remember to tune in. And if you have not yet, do join the Church Interrupted Facebook group to participate with many others to continue this conversation. We would love to hear your reflections and your takeaways. And before I go and before you wrap this up, I'm just going to invite Father Terence to close us in prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are in this situation in this period. And we remember Abraham and Sarah, how you called them and they were willing to move out of what was comfortable and what was known to them to a place totally unknown to them. Lord, as we go through this period, we also remember Moses who was called to lead your people out of Egypt to an unknown place. Lord, as we go through this period, it is unknown what is, what is lying ahead of us. It is unknown what each one of us is called to. But we know that you are calling us to a new way of life. You are calling us to a new way of being sisters and brothers to one another. You're calling us to be a new community. Heartened by your call, heartened by your love, and by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst, and inspired by the words of Jesus Christ, we want to say yes to you, Lord. Yes 
to your calling, yes, to your movement in our hearts. Lord, as we are inspired, may we in turn give you glory in all that we say and all that we do. Lord, we pray that the inspiration, that the graces that we have received may not be forgotten or wasted. Lord, all things are possible with you. When we remember that it is under your reign and in your kingdom that we serve, we ask also, Lord, that you strengthen one and one, each one of us so that we may walk as a community with you. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.